Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks, Futures, and Forex Market Preview for the week beginning Sunday the 30th of October 2022, ending Friday the 4th of November. We're ending the October month again. We'll see what happens. We'll talk about a lot of it here. Okay, here's the dollar index daily chart. We've pulled back. Nothing really happened. Still sitting closer to highs than anything else, and that's what's going on there. Uh, let's go through the major pairs euro dollar off the lows but again the inverse of the dollar index the pound dollar uh, also rallied a bit Aussie dollar um, you know up a bit from the lows right now so we're not like killing it got 13 sell signal on the euro yen daily chart and we've got uh, the pound yen making new highs and no signal here at all uh, if I go to the intraweek action 30 minute candles on the euro dollar. We've got uh, about 300 pips high to low, which is decent, but you know, again, a couple spikes and is what it is. Got the pound dollar sitting at uh, about, let's call it 400 pips high to low. Again, not bad, but Tuesday was the big day. Wednesday there was a move. If you weren't involved with those two moves, it's kind of like nothing there. Your Aussie dollar is kind of the same way. So we're not going to look at most of the rest of this, it's fine. Um, now let's look at the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market futures form. Um, you know, way off the lows at this point in time. And uh, heading up, I've got the S&P cash on uh, Friday was up 93.78. So we've got kind of a major double bottom here if you buy that right now. We've got nine bars up though um, on the uh, count. So we've got a countdown done. NASDAQ 100 up 354 points. This one's not as positive. And we got a couple more. We can get a 10 sell. We got a 10 uh, secret sell signal. Got to get to the 13. Not nearly as positive looking as the S&P because of all the warnings from the tech stocks. Kind of interesting that we've rallied at all. The SOX up 93 points. The biotechs up 164.13. Uh, Russell 2000 up 40. The crude oil down 70 cents to 88.38. Gold down 17.3. Think about that. This is a big move down. Gold's at lows while inflation's at highs. It doesn't really make sense. NASDAQ volume uh, plus uh, NASDAQ advanced decline ratio plus uh, 1565. So more stocks up than down on Friday. New York was plus 15, 16, 19. Sorry. So again, way more stocks up. Um, the NASDAQ volume 4.7 billion shares. So here's the deal. Big rally on Friday. Lowest volume we've seen in quite a while. That's not great. The VIX down $1.64 to 25.75. That's not positive. The trend closes at 1.15. Okay. 1.16. Puts the 10-day. The 10-day moving average is still under 0 0.85. It's at 0.75 actually. That's a pretty big drop from there. That's a sell signal on the broad market at every level. So that's interesting. Apple up $10.94. This is a big move for Apple now because it's only $150 stock. Um, this is what saved the market on Friday, honestly, because everything else was not good. Amazon was down $7.55, made new lows for the year. Meta up $1.26, but again, the big problem was Thursday. Google up $4.07, um, sweeping the lows and coming back up. Goldman Sachs up $4.64. This looks more positive than negative. Netflix down $1.22. Peloton up 20 cents. It's at 801. Again, I think it's a buyout candidate. Amazon or somebody's gonna grab this thing, but we'll see what happens. TLT, the 20-year bond ETF down 67 cents. Tesla up $3.43. Again, kind of off the lows for a bit here. Zoom up $1.60. The VXX down 43 cents, heading near lows again. This thing's hard to trade the same way now that they've changed the rules. NVIDIA up $6.58. That's off the lows. Bitcoin sitting at almost, we'll call it 20,700. Um, and the Dow was up 828 points to 32,861. By the way, let's look at that real quick. That's the Dow. So the Dow's on, like literally. The Dow's not that far off of all-time highs, like 5,000 5, points, which on a $32,000 index is not a big deal. So if you're worried about the economy falling apart, that doesn't suggest that. Having said that, the Dow is only 30 stocks, and I don't like to follow it, so it is what it is. All right, in terms of 
economic data coming out. Uh, sorry, this week, here's what we got. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. Yep. So uh, on Monday, we've got China's got a bunch of data, which we don't know if they're going to even release it. Oh, sorry, this is not the right week. Sorry. Um, so Sunday, Australia's got retail sales, private sector credit. China's got manufacturing PMI numbers, uh, consumer confidence out of Japan, housing starts out of Japan, whatever. Um, going into Monday later in the day, we've got the European CPI flash estimates and everything else, Chicago PMI here in the U.S. Um, Jump to Tuesday. By the way, we're one week away from the time change finally here in the U.S. Got a lot of countries like France and Italy on bank holiday. Won't necessarily slow down the market. Um, Manufacturing PMI out of Switzerland and final manufacturing PMI out of the UK, same with Canada and the US. Uh, construction spending here in the US at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. New Zealand has their unemployment rate. Okay, Europe has a bunch of data coming out. It's all manufacturing PMI data. ADP non farm employment change here in the US at 8 15 a.m. Eastern Time. Crude oil inventories. At 10.30 here in the U.S., we got the Fed announcement on Wednesday. Now, this is what everybody's going to be focused on, right? Is the Fed going to go, okay, sorry, there's enough weakness, we're going to stop raising rates, or, or are they going to you know, go the other way? This is going to be a big meeting, actually. I think one of the biggest we've had in a long time. So we're going to have the announcement in the press conference on Wednesday, and we've got to be ready for that. Um, on Thursday here in the U.S., in the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers, preliminary non-farm productivity, trade balance here in the U.S., that's one of our big three. We'll be half size ahead of that, plus ahead of the Fed. ISM services, PMI, factory orders, natty gas. I mean, it's a lot of data. And then you go to Friday, not as much here, although we do have the unemployment rate here on Friday, and so that'll be another one of our big three. So we're going we're gonna to have three days this week. We're going to be half size or Forex and just be very cautious because of everything that's coming out. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading week.